Well, you you led the the way to bring free school lunch to all public school students in Massachusetts. On some levels, the 2025 House budget exceeds the governor's outlay for school funding. You know, in, in tight revenue times, can it be sustained? Well, I think this is one of the things that are worth trying to sustain. Um, having spent 12 years in the classroom um, in in difficult schools that represented different stratas of our economy, I know how important it is mm -hmm. for kids to come into school having eaten. Mm -hmm. um, you could tell when the kid had his head on his desk falling asleep before you finish the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, that there's a good chance he hasn't eaten. Uh, and and you never get their attention the rest of the day. Right. Uh, and you're fighting that. Come on, hang in there with me. Pay attention. Right, right. You could make and an argument to feed them twice a day. Breakfast. You really and lunch. could. You really could. And the, and and in some cases we are. In the and, and the, the lunch are. program is not enshrined in state law. Should it be? Um, right now we've been able to to to, uh, to finance it. I think we'll be able to finance it for a little bit longer, but. It's like anything else. Uh, uh, we may have to modify it. it. And one of the things we, reason we didn't put it in state law is if there is a reason where we have to, mm -hmm. at some point, means test this and, 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 and uh, make some changes. A lot of advocates say that's made a big difference, especially in a lot of low-income oh, communities. I, I really believe this. The, the early childhood and, and school meals are probably the biggest predictors of success. All right. Well, on the flip side of that, Senator Mike Rodericks, he was with us last week. He does not I support... Like yeah. Well, he doesn't support cocktails to go, however. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and he says... <laughs> You know, of course, the House bill does support them. Uh, he says... If we passed it twice, I think. He, he says, said we already have them. We have package stores. He says stores. we have package stores. <laughs> we already said. have cocktails to go. They're package stores. All right. So so why does the House support them? Well, it w look, it, it was something we came up with during the pandemic to, to help restaurants. It seemed to be successful. Some people liked it. Um, it didn't really cause any problems that we were aware of. So we, we just thought if restaurants want to do it, we'll let them do it. What about outdoor dining? Well, we've been supporters of that also. I, I think, uh, uh, you know, obviously there's problems in the city of Boston, uh, and, and I, I read about them in the paper, thank goodness I don't have to be involved. But, but we've supported it because that too was, was a result of the pandemic was one of those changes that seemed to make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. That the restaurants felt that they stayed competitive a little longer. And the patrons liked it. And patrons liked mm -hmm. it in a nice, mm -hmm. nice night. You go in the, you go in the North End on a sunny summer night, and it's packed. Yeah, it is packed. Of course, then that the North End issue was its own issue about well, outdoor dining. That's what I don't have to be involved. <laughs> right, right. right. I, 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 I'm going to ask you the question, and please don't you know be insulted by the nature of the question. But uh, you've held the gavel since 2020. Any thoughts that you'd like to pass it on? He's trying to get rid of me. No, that's why I said what I said. <laughs> no. Uh, no, listen, I don't take anything personally. I've been around this long. Look, there are a lot of things I'd like to do. I think this opportunity with Stuart uh, to change our health care system that I, I really am interested in trying to do. I think that uh, the re relocation of service points in the state needs to be done. We need a, a census of beds to make sure that we have enough beds in different areas of the Commonwealth. Sounds I, like you feel like you have a lot more yeah, to do. Yeah, I, I yeah. especially am concerned about the health care stuff. Yeah, I, I, I originally was hoping that this term I would come in and be able to do some major, major changes. It's been 10, 12 years since we did uh, the last bill that created the HPC. Uh, and admittedly, there were problems with the legislation we did 12 years ago. I would like to fix those. And there are some other things I w wanted to do this year. But Stuart has eaten up all yeah, the oxygen. The air out oh, of the oxygen. man, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's been difficult to get anyone to talk about anything but how this affects their facility. And I understand that. If you're running a hospital now, a lot of stress. Uh, where is your... How do, you, how do you pay for the, yeah. the, the, the drug treatments that you have to use now? Uh, and, and so there are some serious problems in healthcare that need to be 
need to be resolved, and I'd like to be part of that. I really think I have something to offer. I'm the, I'm the last one from the 2006 group that uh, changed the way we did health care. Well, so. It's great to see you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Thanks Thank for you being for here. being in the oh, chair. Oh, happy to be here. I, I really wonderful. enjoy this. this it's really great to see you. Thanks to the House Speaker, Ron Mariel.